Welcome back to my channel. In the previous video, I introduced the operating principles of half-wave and full-wave rectifier circuits. We also explored how to use capacitors to smooth and reduce ripple in the output voltage. However, in many practical applications, a stable output voltage is essential, regardless of fluctuations in the input voltage or load current. Let's consider the following example to understand this better. Suppose I have a full wave rectifier circuit with an output voltage of 20 volts after capacitor filtering. My goal is to power a load consisting of a 12 volts bulb that consumes 100 milliampères. To achieve this, I need to use a resistor with a value of 80 ohms. An 80 ohm is not a standard value, so I'm using an 82 ohm resistor. The current will change slightly, but it won't significantly affect our experiment. But I encountered a problem, the AC voltage at my location is unstable. When the AC voltage rises to 260 for volts, the transformer's output voltage also increases. This leads to a DC output voltage increase to 23 volts, and the brightness of the bulbs is significantly increased. Similarly, when the AC voltage drops to 200 volts, the transformer's output voltage decreases, resulting in a DC output voltage drop to 17 volts, and the brightness of the bulbs is significantly reduced. Another scenario, suppose my load suddenly requires a higher current, such as 200 milliampères. This could happen when I connect an additional bulb to the circuit. As the current increases, the voltage drop across the resistor also increases, reducing the voltage supplied to the load and affecting the bulb's brightness. Conversely, when the load requires a lower current, the voltage drop across the resistor decreases and the voltage supplied to the load is increased. This could increase the bulb's brightness and pose a risk to the load. Thus, changes in input voltage and load current can cause significant fluctuations in the output voltage. This is particularly critical when the output voltage is used in electronic circuits with microcontrollers and op-amps. In these cases, voltage instability can lead to serious problems. To address this issue, voltage regulator ICs have been developed. They maintain a stable output voltage within a certain range, regardless of changes in input voltage and load current. Voltage regulator ICs are classified based on their operating principle, linear and switching. Linear voltage regulator ICs operate by dissipating excess voltage as heat through semiconductor components. The advantage of this type is its simple circuitry and low cost. However, their efficiency is low due to energy wasted as heat. Switching voltage regulator ICs, on the other hand, operate by converting the input voltage into pulses through the switching action of MOSFETs and using inductors to produce a stable output voltage. Although their circuitry is more complex, their efficiency is much higher, potentially exceeding 90%. In this video, I will focus on linear voltage regulator ICs. Switching voltage regulator ICs will be discussed in a future video. The 78X series ICs are a typical example of linear voltage regulator ICs. According to the datasheet, there are three pin components with input, ground G and D, and output pins. In the 78XX designation, XX represents the output voltage, for example, 05 for 5 volts, 09 for 9 volts, and 12 for 12 volts. The out pin provides the desired output voltage. This pin is typically connected to a capacitor with sufficient capacitance to supply current to the load. For example, if I need 12 volts for the load, I would use an LM7812IC. The G and D pin is the common ground point for both input and output. The in pin is connected to the input voltage, which is the voltage to be reduced. In this case, it's the output voltage from the full wave rectifier circuit. Usually, this pin also needs to be connected to a capacitor with sufficient capacitance, but since my full wave rectifier circuit already has capacitors, I only need to use small capacitors for noise filtering at the input and output. The input voltage needs careful consideration. According to the datasheet, 
the maximum input voltage value is 35 volts. Additionally, the input voltage must be at least 2 volts higher than the output voltage. In our case, the input voltage is 20 volts, meeting both requirements. Another parameter that needs to be considered is the maximum output current. From the datasheet, the maximum output current of LM7812 is 1 ampere. Now, if the input voltage or load current changes within the allowable range, the output voltage will remain stable. As mentioned earlier, linear voltage regulator ICs dissipate excess energy as heat. In our case, if the load current is 200 milliA pairs and the voltage drop across the LM7812 IC is 8 volts, the power dissipation will be 1, 6 west. This power dissipation heats up the IC. If it is too hot, the IC needs to be cooled to ensure stable operation. However, I'm experiencing an issue with supplying 12 volts. 1A2 an electronic circuit located 1 meter away from the power supply. When the circuit is operational, the actual voltage measured at the load is only around 11 volts, which causes unstable operation. The reason for this 1 volt voltage drop is that the 1A load current flows through the connecting wires between the power supply and the load causing a voltage drop across the wires themselves. To ensure the load circuit receives the correct 12 volts, a potential solution is to use an LM317 voltage regulator IC. The LM317 is a linear voltage regulator with an adjustable output voltage. Instead of connecting the pin to directly to GND like fixed voltage regulators, the LM317 uses a voltage feedback network from the output back to the pin 2. With LM317, pin 2 is called adjust pin. For example, if I need an output voltage of 13 volts, I can set the value of resistor R1 to 1000 ohms and resistor R2 to 9.1 thousand ohms in the LM317's feedback circuit. It's also important to know that there are voltage regulator ICs designed to produce negative voltages. These are crucial components for certain op amp circuits particularly in audio amplifiers. Just like their positive counterparts, negative voltage regulators are available in both fixed and adjustable output voltage versions. In my next video, I'll demonstrate how to use a negative voltage regulator and design a symmetrical power supply, a common configuration in audio applications. Thank you for watching my video. If you found it helpful, please subscribe to the channel and share the video.